Hello, my name is Jared Smetanovich. I am the Director of Planning and Building Services with the District of Central Saanich. And today I am happy to present our second draft of our official community plan to our community. This presentation today will cover our project timeline and just sort of outline where we're at in this process of our OCP review and the, the launch of our second draft. We'll go over some of the public input that we received and how that uh, helped inform our second draft OCP. I'll talk about some of the revisions that are incorporated into the document, and then I'll go over some next steps. So we are currently in phase three of our official community plan. The first draft was released in January, 2022, and then community engagement occurred since that time. A summary of engagement, if, if the community members are interested, is included in the What We Heard report that was presented to Council at the July 25th meeting of this year. Just to recap some of the public engagement that we did uh, during this um, review of our official community plan from the time the first draft was released. We held three open houses with the community. We had over 130 people attend those meetings and, and really had some great input. We had an online survey and a survey at our open house as well. And we had over 119 respondents to that survey providing great information and input on the document. We had external agencies such as other our neighboring local governments, some provincial bodies, the Agricultural Land Commission, um, provide their input into the, into the official community plan, as well as numerous emails and correspondence and back and forth discussion. Um, we also met with many stakeholder um, groups in the community, including holding agricultural community events as well. So there was a great opportunity for input and I think it really helped inform this next draft of our OCP. So I'll get into some of the revisions that we have gone through in, in our second draft. Uh, and it, this is based on input we received from the community, from council, from our OCP advisory committee uh, and our stakeholders. So we restructured the document with the objective to shorten its overall length. Uh, there was a general feeling that the document was quite long, um, quite wordy. So we tried to tighten up some policy, combine policies where possible, uh, remove policies where it was really just operational. We, we took the history section and removed that from the official community plan uh, and, and the context section that's in there. What we're doing with that is we're putting it onto our website. And if anyone wants to know information about the official community plan review or just the history in general of, of Central Saanich, our website will have that information on it. We deleted the OCP project process section, which really informed how we updated the OCP. That'll be in the municipal records. Anyone who wants to understand how we developed or this OCP can refer to that. The advocacy policies that were in the OCP, they, they've been removed from the OCP, but they'll be provided to council and, and the community as part of council strategic planning sessions. Implementation section, just in, in, in a goal of shortening it up, we also removed that section from the OCP, but each section of the official committee plan, each chapter, so agriculture, for example, or housing has implementation policies or action items that will help uh, bring us forward and, and uh, implement the OCP. And then our community stats, uh, we had a fairly significant amount of community stats presented in the OCP. What we did with that is we shortened it up into a snapshot and relocated it into a, an, to an appendix of the document. Now, some of the policy content that we have updated based on feedback from the community. There's a policy about main corridor development. So just outside of our village centers of Sandwich and Brentwood Bay, for example, we, we do allow for some graduated higher density in that area, as long as it's compatible with surrounding neighborhoods. So up to four stories on those main corridors. One thing we did in the OCP is we clarified that those projects still require an official community plan amendment, a rezoning amendment and a development permit amendment. So it's not an outright um, ability to do that type of development. It needs to go through a council review process in order to ensure that it's compatible uh, with, with um, the OCP goals and design direction. Another significant, um, I would say significant change from the previous draft to this draft is we're reverting back to that do not support uh, removal or exclusions from the agricultural land reserve. We, in, in the first draft, we um, put in some, I, I would call it um, avenues for exclusion where it met a strong community need, such as if it was for healthcare or schooling or major institutional use. Um, that still can occur in the future, is there a need, uh, but really emphasizing that 
our agricultural lands are important to the community and we do not support exclusions at this time. Another policy content change is the good governance section. Uh, we changed that to institutions and community services. So instead of focusing, focusing on how the district governs, it's more focused on the services that the district and volunteer groups in our community um, and that those services that are provided in our community. Some further revisions that we've uh, done in terms of policy. There was a policy that talked about realigning Keating Crossroad when the uh, Butler pit is exhausted to straighten that road out. And, and we removed that from the uh, document based on some input we received uh, and some ideas that it does um, slow traffic, calm traffic by having the curve in the road. Again, that's something that can be explored down the road again when, when the time comes. There was a report presented to council uh, in August of uh, 2022 uh, called the Saunders Report, looking at community healthcare support and, and housing for healthcare providers and whatnot. Recommendations from that report in terms of how we can um, support our healthcare system and our healthcare community, um, recommendations from that report have been included in our OCP in terms of policy content. And then there's, I, I can't go over them all, but there's been numerous number of edits to improve um, upon the, the policies that are in place. And for details about those, people can refer to our council agenda from September 22nd, and it has a comprehensive package of the OCP draft that was presented to council with the table of all the changes uh, and, and the input we received from the public. So certainly please refer to that if you're, you're interested in learning more about further changes. In terms of land use designations, this is one of the OCP's um, primary uh, objectives is to define what uses can occur uh, in um, our community and, and where they should occur. So one of the proposed changes was to enable some higher density at the corner of Keating uh, Crossroad and Central Saanich Road to support um, employment housing essentially in the Keating area. And we, we, understand, we know that there's a, a strong housing um, a concern and a really shortage of supply in our community. And you know, regionally, it's just, just the way things are. Um, but we did hear from the community some concern around this. Uh, and we do know there's some changes coming with the Keating flyover should, when, that, that, when that comes to fruition. So we pulled back on that proposal to have higher density in, in that quadrant. Uh, and we're reverting back to what it currently is today of that lower density development with some corridor uh, potential development. So that's been removed from the OCP. And, and once the Keating flyover is, um, is developed and the traffic patterns are understood better and we have some active transportation in that area, there's an opportunity to revisit that. But in this current OCP, that is not, not on the table anymore uh, in this draft. Some other land use designation changes that are, are retained in the OCP, I'll just highlight them. The Sandstone Village design plan uh, proposed some changes to higher density within the Sandstone Village, and those are incorporated into the OCP, as well as the Dignan Road uh, area. There's a proposal to increase that density from single family or, or low density residential to a higher density residential. It's close to Brentwood Bay Village, walkable, and it's surrounded by that higher, higher density as it currently stands. Some other land use designation changes that are, uh, are in the OCP, and these were in the first draft and they're continuing to the second draft, but they're a change from our, our current OCP. We've identified four small commercial nodes um, in the OCP. If you look at our land use designation map, there is a, a yellow dot on these four commercial nodes, be it Moodyville, um, West Saanich and Keating, that corner of West Saanich and Keating where um, the former Sassy site was, uh, Turgus, area. So the former Marigold Nursery site and, and, and that area has been recognized as a small commercial node. And then the corner of Island View and East Saanich Road is, is recognizing that historic commercial node that's currently there. It doesn't mean that area, those areas are major growth areas in our community. We're just recognizing that they have had some commercial elements in the past and that will continue and is supported as we go forward. Another change in land use designation uh, in the, the second draft OCP is looking at our rural designation and recognizing the varying types, various types of rural we have in our community. Uh, we're not just all one rural agriculture type of um, designation, which it currently stands. There's shorelines, there's forested areas, and there is agriculture. 
So our draft OCP recognizes those three subcategories of rural designations and has different policy elements uh, for each. For example, shoreline, protecting the natural shoreline um, and, and ensuring that uh, any development or any, uh, any um, you know, parks in there recognize the importance of shoreline environments uh, and then agriculture, supporting agriculture in, in our rural areas where, where it currently is and is appropriate. And then just a little bit about our design guidelines for official community plan. Um, first off, design guidelines or development permit area design guidelines, um, they do a couple of things. They, first, they help implement the policies of the official community plan um, through guiding building design and helping to protect our natural environment. Our current development permit guidelines in the OCP as they stand today will remain in this first draft OCP. Uh, council gave direction to the planning department to put the update of our design guidelines or development permit guidelines into our 2023 work plan. So you'll see an update coming and a, and a project occurring through 2023 to um, improve and update our, our design guidelines of our OCP. A couple of changes just to highlight that we did incorporate into this draft OCP is looking at our marine shoreline development permit area. And what we've done is we've extended that seaward into the sea by third, uh, up to 30 meters. It currently stands at 15. And this is to really capture the extent that docks are allowed to extend out into the water. Inland, that's gonna be remaining at 15 meters. Uh, so there's no change there. Uh, we, had, we took the opportunity to update our riparian uh, area mapping. So our streams and creeks, uh, we, had, we had updated data. So we incorporated that into our OCP, but all other development permit uh, mapping does remain the same. So I just want to highlight some next steps as we move forward on this uh, draft of Fisher Community Plan. So it's been presented to Council on September 22nd, uh, and from that time until early December, uh, we'll be inviting public input. The, the draft OCP will be on our district website uh, at uh, Let's Talk Central Saanich and slash OCP, so you can see it there. So from that period of time, certainly please review the document and uh, give us your feedback through that website, through our OCP at Central Sandwich email. And follow up to September, we'll be uh, reviewing that, that uh, commentary received from the public and then making any further updates to the draft official community plan uh, based on that feedback. And we will be taking uh, a second, uh, you know, I guess it would be a third draft OCP to council uh, for consideration of first reading sometime in the early new year. We're targeting January for that. So at that time, you'll, you'll start to see the council process roll through. Um, council will review that first draft or maybe it's changes that occur at that time. And eventually we'll roll through to a, a potential public hearing on this uh, in the spring. So um, there's lots of time for community input. There, there's lots of time to review the document and, and provide us with your comments. And we look forward to uh, hearing that and having further dialogue on this next draft OCP. So thank you very much. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very pleased to present the second draft to you today. <laughs>